The Liang Mai ethnic people, also known as Kacha Naga, are the indigenous inhabitants of Tamenglong district of Manipur and Barren district of Nagaland state. Their main center is Tame Township of Manipur. These ethnic people have their own distinctive culture and tradition. Since time immemorial, the Liang Mais have been peace-loving people. They enjoy a peaceful life intermingled with various activities of their own tradition. Though the Langmays are skilled and endowed with various individual talents, their main occupation is Zoom cultivation. Hutanbo and his wife Marai Willu were a childless couple who lived in an arbor village of Machenglong. The couple made offerings and prayed to God Charawang, but their prayer was not answered. They decided to invite the priest called Sinku to perform a ritual to please the god. The chief came to the house and he used the leaf to chase away all evils from the couple and urged the gods to bless the couple. The priest then threw away the maram and pume at the fencing of the house, urging the leaf to take away all the evils from the house. It was a traditional belief that a childless couple should offer a big feast for the village elders as a sacrifice as advised by the Sinku. The priest and seniors, after a hearty meal, blessed the couple, saying that God would open the womb of his wife with a son. In due course of time, God Charawang answered their prayer and blessed the couple. When a child is about to be born, the Liang Mais usually take out all their valuable properties outside the house. Even the attendants will wear skimpy dresses. In the event of a miscarriage, where both the mother and child dies, they will be buried in the house. The remaining family members will abandon the house, leaving behind all the properties which are inside the house. God Charawang was happy with Hutanbo and his wife, and no misfortune befell at Marai Willu's delivery. There was joy and jubilation. In every Langmai village, there is a village dormitory or morum for both boys and girls called Kangchuki and Liuchuki, respectively. <laughs> <laughs> the 
The leader of the boys' dormitory is called Pakhangpi and Lyuchupi for the girls. In big villages, there are two dormitories for the boys and girls. Ari Kangchuki and Ahang Kangchuki for the boys and Ari Lyuchuki and Ahang Lyuchuki for the girls' dormitory. The village damsels during the lean seasons weave clothes and spun cotton in their morum called Yuchuki. The boys come along with their crafts and work in the Lyuchuki talking with the girls. The girls welcome the boys by offering them wooden seeds. They offer rice beer. The boys also sing songs praising the girls. Soon after the birth of a child, a ceremony called Tazum Gibo is performed to sanctify the child. This is the first rite and is obligatory. The cock killed in this ceremony is to be consumed by the mother alone. However, a piece of liver is notionally fed to the child. Whenever a newborn child is notionally enrolled in a particular moru, a tiffin called tebum, made out of a bamboo stem filled with food, will be presented by the elders of the moru for the baby. Tajan Matakbo or naming ceremony of a newborn child is performed after three to five days. Each clan has its hereditary name. Each name has a meaning behind and also identifies a particular clan. Naming ceremony usually take place during the night time. If the child cried after repeated console after a child is named, if the child continues crying in spite of repeated consolation, a search for another name would begin. Oh. Hutanbo's family members named the newborn child Hutana. It was a taboo to take a child outside the house till the naming ceremony is completed. This period is called Nabanki. <laughs> Tamra Gwadbo or the first head shaving ceremony is very significant. The fate of the child was determined in this ceremony. It was mandatory for the head of the family man who shaves the child to be free of any inauspicious omen. He uses the shaving instrument cautiously to avoid unnecessary cuts for the belief that bleeding predicts a bad omen. Another rite called a lobo, a sacrifice offered for the good health of the baby, was performed. The head of the family usually killed a cock or in rare cases an egg was offered and later consumed by the mother. Rice beer was used in every rite or occasion. In 
It was the bounden duty of the parents to arrange a special traditional feeding ceremony called Malanbo for their son. This is done if they intended to make their son a strong, healthy warrior and a leader. Parents who intended to perform Malanbo invited their close kins, relatives and friends who were accomplished experts in their own fields. The invitees were offered rice beer and they seek their advice to help make their son an accomplished person in all fields. Hutanbo sent through his emissary pieces of meat to his relatives and friends. Acceptance of the meat signifies that he will lead the youth for a certain period and educate him with his expertise. The youth had to live with a particular guru for a certain period like a son. It was arranged in such a way that it lasted for one whole year. It was also a traditional practice to arrange a grand feast for the members of his Kangchu on the first day of Malanbo. In some Liang Mai villages, a special seat called Malanbam is arranged for the Malanbo youth in the Moru. He is not allowed to loiter here and there like his fellow members of the Moru. Members of his Moru scatters food from his house. Relatives and friends also prepare special food and drinks for Hutanang. Hutanang became a good student with the blessings of his various temporal parents. Hutanang became physically fit and ritually clean and was expert in all fields of work. Eventually, Hutanang grew up to be a handsome man and fulfilled all the social prescription under the Liang Mai custom and tradition. According to the social practices of the Liang Mai tribe, the youths were obliged to know the art of making baskets of different designs through practice and under the instruction of the seniors in the Moru. It was important that both boys and girls were taught to perform yeoman services. They go out in groups to collect vegetables in the precincts of the village, even banana leaves, and distribute to household mothers who were overburdened with family chores. <laughs> Oh, 
The head of the family sacrifices a cock before the youth is sent to Kanchuki. This ritual is called Puntan Raking, which means prayer for prowess. He then gives a new haircut to the youth. This haircut is called Akang Pirim, which means adult haircut. After Akang Pirim, the youth is given a new loincloth by his mother and other accessories by the elder. All these acts signify that the boy has attended manhood. Family members and elders bless the youth for a prosperous life. Then he is escorted to Kangchuki by his father and mother. They also take a goat of rice beer with meat chutneys. Oh, oh, When a new member is enrolled, the Morung inmates were served with rice beer and meat chutney. The day being meant for the youth introduction, the alumni were also invited for a face-to-face -face meeting. Utanbo, <laughs> after a round of consultation with elders and with the consent of his son, sent his best friend Adambo as his emissary called Kali in Liangmai dialect. In Liang Mai tradition, the boy side takes the initiative. The proposal usually took place either late in the evening or at night to make sure that the girl's parents were at home and to escape the pang of humiliation in case the proposal was rejected. Adambo went to Kaizulu's house one late evening and met her parents. He introduced himself and divulged about Hutanang and his family lineage. Adambo told the parents that Hutanang was from a good background and the marriage alliance might bring prosperity, pride and prestige to both the families. If the Kali is given an assurance of acceptance or impression of willingness, another meeting would be fixed for further formalities. <laughs> In the second round, Adambo entered Kaizulu's house. He is accompanied by another elder. They also carry a small iron spade that signifies peaceful relationship between the two families. After a formal introduction and discourse, the boy's side presented the iron spade to the girl's parents. 
If the proposal is accepted, the girl's mother would pick up the iron spit after her daughter approves it. Then the mother would offer zaumu, that is rice beer, to the boy's party. After obtaining the consent of the girl's parents, they return with the good news which was happily received by the boy's parents. Hutanbo and Marai Wiliu and their families were elated and began the preparation for marriage. When a girl is betrothed to a boy on the eve of her wedding, her friends arrange a parting picnic. They usually go to the riverside and enjoy the day making earrings, yarn strings and garlands of green leaves. Kai Jiliu and her friends did the same and enjoyed the entire day. While giving away vegetables, they will inform them that one of them is getting married very soon. They invited the family to attend the marriage. Usually, the village boys accompany the girls while fetching water from the water hole, which is generally quite a distance from the village. The boys normally walk in the front and back, keeping the girls in the middle to give them protection. Mm -hmm. 
In the water hole, the girls will wash clothes and also fill their bamboo water container called duihen. After filling it up, they return in groups. This is a time when some of them share their feelings with one another. Whenever a girl gets married officially, she is honored with a farewell dance by the village youth. Such a marriage is greatly admired. At the close of the farewell dance, the girl would be taken to her dormitory to spend the last night as a damsel. She spends the night with her friends in close intimacy, exchanging gifts to one another. Wedding being one of the most important functions, the girls' parents offer meat and rice beer to the villagers. In some Liang Mai villages, it is obligatory on the part of the girl's family to offer cooked meat to the boy's family on the wedding day. Usually, wedding takes place in the afternoon. It is a taboo to send away the daughter before noon and after sunset. The groom's party comes to the bride's place to take the bride. They also bring presents as a bride price. Till the bride price is settled, the bride is not allowed to leave. After a long haggle about the presents, the bride's family agrees to give away the bride. The bride is escorted by Chami Mei, who are married sisters and cousins of the groom, to her new house. It is mandatory that the parents arrange necessary domestic needs. Even animals like cows, mithuns and buffaloes are given by rich parents. Kaizulu brought many richly presents. A bride will enter her new house by stepping on a small iron spade placed by her mother-in-law. The cold iron spade will make her a peaceful housewife. According to the belief of that particular family, 
whether she steps on the spade with her left foot or right foot will predict the future. Hutanang and his wife were blessed by God Charawang. Within a few years, he became rich and wealthy. He could perform various feasts of merit. Among the various feasts of merit, Kariyo Dumbo is the most admired achievement in one's lifetime. Kariyo means 10 and Dumbo is performance. Anybody who has achieved Mukeng, that is, who yielded the highest harvest for 10 times in his village and fed the whole village can perform Kariyo Dumbo. When a man attempts to give the feast of merit like Kariyo Dumbo, he has to invite all the clan members and village elders to seek their approval and ask their pardon if he had wronged them in any way. He also invites eight selected youths who are expert in their own field. They are called Kapaziang. They will help in the feast of Karyo Dumbo. They will help him in all manual works and arrange in bringing of Mali Kwang, that is, a wooden trough to contain rice beer, food, etc. <laughs> They will also go as emissaries to various neighboring villages to dole out cotton wrapped in leaves. Hutanang also sends cotton wrapped in banana leaves to the neighboring villages so that no one disturbs him during his feast of marriage. According to the Liang Mai tradition, any village who received the cotton will not wage war or attack the village during the period of Karyu Dumbo. <coughs> Buichang, that is Mitun, must be killed on such a remarkable occasion. Before it is killed, the Mitun will be released in the village. Whoever catches the animal brings credit to his name and his dormitory. Kabuipi hangbo or catching the head of the mitun hanged upside down on a twin pole is a popular game. The head is prized. It is a traditional practice that the one who catches the head has to offer something in kind and rice beer to his morum, which is considered as an honor. Every youth tries to win the game. If there is a tie, the head will be placed higher and higher until only one becomes the champion. Oh. 
During Karyodumbo period, Hutanang's house is thronged with villagers enjoying drinks and food to their heart's content. There is hoeing and singing, praising Hutanang for his great deeds, and the feast continues for many days. Any person who has performed Karyo Dumbo is respected not only by the villagers but by neighboring villagers. And in the near future, he has every right to build a house called Chakyuki with the help of the villagers. This Duko feature is a reenactment of the Liang Mai culture and tradition so that the coming generations will be able to visualize how their ancestors lived in the bygone days. It will be preserved for posterity. <laughs> Come to Kim, 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 Kim,